a new randomized controlled trial crossover design study about as good as it can get may have just helped us uncover the most powerful brain compound that we could take that can help us feel smarter, literally help improve blood flow to the brain. I'll come right out and tell you what it is because it's simple. It's GAA, guanadinoacetate. We'll just call it GAA. Now it's particularly interesting, even though it is a precursor to creatine, it is very unique because it does something different than creatine itself. So we'll talk about how to use it, but I want to get right into the nitty gritty of this newer study because it just proves the point altogether. And since I gave you the answer up front, if you could just do me a solid and stick around through this video, maybe drop a comment for the algorithm. It really does help it out. YouTube says, hey, people are engaging with this in a good way, but also just stick around. I want to at least teach you how to use it and educate you on it so you're not just flying by the seat of your pants with a random compound that you don't really know much about other than the name. So first, we've seen in other studies, before we get into this randomized control trial, that GAA seems to increase creatine levels in selective tissues, whereas like creatine in general just kind of helps increase your base creatine stores across a lot of different tissues. GAA is a little more targeted, and it seems to be fairly specific on how it targets the tissues. Sometimes it's different in individual people. Sometimes it's just we see these common themes. It seems to be a particularly good in the brain, particularly good in larger muscles. So it's like, okay, why? would we even take creatine if this GAA is good? Well, because creatine is going to increase our base level and GAA is helping creatine sort of go to the right places. In this case, the brain. It's just crazy phenomenal. I also put a link down below for my favorite probiotic, which seems really random and sort of a non sequitur, but there's merit here because the gut brain axis is probably one of the things that science is most excited about right now in terms of the human body. So if you're looking kind of improving your brain, in addition to the stuff that I'm talking about, I would recommend a good probiotic. So I put that link down below. That's a 25% off discount link for Seeds Daily Symbiotic. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. Now they have the clinical data to back it up, but truth be told, this is just my opinion. It's the best probiotic that's on the market. It's the only one that I'll use, literally. Otherwise, if I didn't have it, I would just eat yogurt and fermented food because I think most probiotics are a waste, but Seed puts their money where their mouth is. That's a 25% off discount link. Check them out after this video. But let's keep going on GAA here for a second because the probiotics are important and I think that should be a staple either way. But if you're looking for the extra boost, GAA might be the thing. So this randomized control trial, it had people take two grams of creatine and two grams of GAA. They were measuring their blood oxygen saturation before and after particular tasks. So they had them either at rest, meditating, doing a cognitive task, and in the post-task recovery phase. What they found is that GAA plus creatine increased the blood oxygen saturation to the prefrontal cortex and to the areas of the brain being used in all these different situations, whereas placebo did not. So what's happening here is GAA is influencing brain uptake. So in another study we saw when they used magnetic resonance spectroscopy, we were able to see that there was literally a 9% increase in creatine with just GAA alone into the gray matter, a 12% increase in creatine into the white matter without even taking creatine, just GAA, and a 17% plus increase in the cerebellum. So we're talking crazy increases. Now, what does this mean though? What does this do for your brain? What is it actually doing and how can you see an improvement? It's doing a couple things. For one, it's inhibiting glutamate transport and increasing extracellular glutamate. When you have a lot of glutamate as this excitatory neurotransmitter sort of circulating in extracellular space, it can actually create a lot of neuroplasticity. This means that you are in a stage where you can have new learnings and have memories formed. You can actually learn new tasks. You can learn new things. It's sort of like how people can overcome even traumas. Like we see it in particular treatments like ketamine assisted therapy. They will actually do this with traumas and PTSD because it helps the brain rewire. So you're quite literally having a rewiring of the brain. Not to mention there is a significant increase in just neuronal signaling. So you're increasing the electrical activity within your brain. Remember, our brain is a small weight, but it takes up about 20% of our total energy demand. Okay, so our muscles in our brain have a lot of creatine demand. And when you find out that creatine doesn't really get into the brain as efficiently as we would hope, GAA is better at it. So GAA can potentially cross the blood-brain barrier easier and form creatine in the brain. So the new evidence that we're having here is just telling us 
so, so much. There was an RCT published in Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism a while back that actually put GAA and creatine head to head. And when it came to the brain, GAA increased brain creatine levels by 16% over creatine. Does this mean toss out your creatine? Heck no. Like creatine is still required as our base, right? Especially if we're depleting it and we're using our brain a lot and we're training a lot, we're going to deplete creatine. But GAA is going to help us through those buffers. If we start to drain creatine, we don't always have creatine just readily available to scoop and replenish. We rely on GAA to form creatine. It's the immediate precursor to creatine. So if GAA stores are high, then you're in this position where if creatine dips, your body can start pulling what it needs to from GAA and form creatine specifically in the brain. So if you had a taxing workout that zapped your creatine stores, your brain might suffer. People like me, for me to really feel creatine, I end up having to take like 10, 15, 20 grams a day. No joke. I'll feel it at five, but I need to really bump it up. So everyone's talking about creatine, creatine, creatine for the brain, but no one's talking about GAA because it's cheap and it's not that glamorous. And I'm not saying that creatine's not good. I'm saying that the studies are now showing GAA works better than creatine, but GAA and creatine together is like, like you want your brain to feel on fire. You want to feel calm and smooth and fast. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. This is the combination. This is a compound that I can say with pretty much 99% certainty, because I never say 100%, is going to change how your brain feels. And my own personal experience with it has allowed me to actually reduce my creatine dose and feel like I'm getting the effectiveness of it with less water retention because I can lower my actual creatine dose and use GAA to sort of help support those peaks and valleys or the, mainly those valleys. So GAA, about three grams per day, about five grams per day of creatine. And if you add about half a gram, like 500 milligrams of sodium, there's a particular transporter that's called the sodium chloride dependent creatine transporter. This is actually required for creatine to get into the brain. So if you have a little bit of salt with your creatine, it can get taken up even better. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow. Go get some GAA.